welcome back to California Cooking. You know what, Thanksgiving, it's gonna be here before you know it. And I'm getting some holiday table and menu inspiration from LA event planner, Annie Campbell. Then I'm using one of my favorite fall ingredients to make a stuffed shells pasta bake. And Levi and I are whipping up something sweet. It's a pumpkin ice cream pie. Annie Campbell has a very successful boutique catering and event company. And I started following her on Instagram and was so inspired by these beautiful events, not only that she plans for other people, but for her own family. I got the chance to meet Annie and she gave me some great tips on how to throw a beautiful, simple, yet easy Thanksgiving get together. I think this is so cool because I follow Annie on Instagram. We just met, but you know how, the, and I think Instagram has done this with, with people is it's like feeling like you know someone totally. because you post things with your cute family. Everybody's going through these different feelings of being in a pandemic and you would take these special moments to create a family dinner, to create things that I think we now maybe don't take for granted like we took for granted before, like a meal with your loved ones outside. Right. Where did that come from? I think that's anchored our family during this time. It always does. With We are workaholics. My husband and I work nights and weekends. So the holidays and these family moments of making them special has always been really important to me. It's like the pause and focusing on what's important. My mom did that all of our holidays. So did were, mine. Yeah big, big deals, large gatherings, a lot of family friends. And so they're my best childhood memories mm -hmm. and probably why I wanted to have kids. You know, like, <laughs> like if it were for- Selfishly, I did too. It's just been more important than ever, those yeah. moments. Yeah. Do you have a favorite holiday or a favorite kind of party where you get really excited? I mean, I'm a Christmas monster. Okay. So I like starting with getting my tree yeah. two days after Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. I love Christmas. Um, but for entertaining, I love some of the off holidays. Like I love a Bastille Day. I love a St. Patrick's Ooh, a Day. A Bastille Day. Okay. Um, Day of the Dead. You yeah. know, just things that people don't necessarily have their own traditions, mm -hmm. but making them fun. Yeah, I love that because life's too short, and it you know might as well right. celebrate. Something. I've never watched the Kentucky Derby, but that's a fun party. <laughs> Wear a hat and drink a. What is it? They julep. drink the jewel, the mint julep. Yeah. And you had a catering company, and you would have events, and obviously that all stopped, you right. know, when people weren't having parties or get togethers. So what did you do? And you did it pretty early on. We did it March 12th because we went from doing, you know, nine events a week to zero on our books because th things just kept canceling, canceling, canceling. And we have a big team. Um, and I just had this moment of we need to do something else. And I was in my car and I went and posted it on Instagram that we were starting a meal delivery service. Without really thinking how you oh. would do a meal delivery service, right? Oh, all of the packaging and logistics revealed themselves. Yeah, as time went on. This was just, what can we do? What services can we offer? And I think, you know, people are so overwhelmed on so many levels. Yeah. And so the comfort of good food in their homes um, was, you know, is a great service. Yeah, so Annie, told me this is such a great story and I always love stories about how people start their business because I think so many people in their head are like oh gosh I'd love to do this if I only knew how right <laughs> right so you had a friend sometimes we need that person to like push us off the ledge my dear friend childhood friend Amy um, basically pitched me as a caterer when I had never done a single catering job I was hired as the caterer and somebody called me with an event the following night 60 guests and I just said yes. Stayed up 24 hours, made the craziest mess you can imagine, drove there crying, and tray passed the hors d'oeuvres, put out the buffet, <laughs> acted like a maniac probably, and from there it has truly been a fake it till you make it. Fake it till you make it, I think, is sometimes the way it's gotta be. Otherwise, if you sit and think about it too much. Right, you're just gonna be in your own way. You're gonna talk yourself out of it. And then 10 years later, your husband's in the business, mm -hmm. so it's it's really a, a family affair. Very much a family business. And so before the pandemic, what was a normal week like for your company? Last year we did 300 events, ranging from, you know, big birthday bashes, 
graduation barbecues, and then a lot of in-store lifestyle brands. Goop's a major client, so we do a lot of fun Goop events. How's Gwyneth? <laughs> I love Gwyneth. <laughs> This is my kind of Thanksgiving table. It's so pretty, it's colorful, but it also feels like the season. Totally, and it, and really easy to do. I am not a florist. I get to work with a lot of really great florists who I've learned from. Little tips like having these pomegranates, it looks so much prettier when they're open. Now you can see the beautiful seeds inside. And the olive branches, a lot of people can just clip them in their backyard. Yeah, yeah. You know, both of these things or any greenery that you have totally work for this. And this is $25 of fruit. And there's only a few flowers that are water tubed. Yeah. I also like about this kind of a table, you could do this Monday of Thanksgiving. You don't have to do it day of. There's like already so much going on. And I love the earthy tablecloth. I mean, this is just a homey cut. Like you you match the, the table, which is totally Annie. These are both Heather Taylor <laughs> home, who's a dear friend. Oh, it's so and pretty. I, I do think investing in some great linens yeah. makes a big difference, brings it to life and very fun to play with. Beautiful candles and candlesticks just to elevate the mood. Colored tapers are sort of just a great go-to and having a you know versatile set of candlesticks, I use them almost every single holiday table that I yeah. do. And I think this always is a nice little touch when everyone knows where they're seated. Yeah, even this family of even four. Even family <laughs> of four, but it makes it feel special. Like it's not just every other day. I agree. I think also one thing that I like this year with, you know, if you're having people from your pod or your family, but not your immediate family, maybe more likely to do things outside because of COVID. So also you can bring your out, your inside outside. Like these are my indoor chairs, but makes it feel dressed up and for a holiday to, you know, use your indoor Move stuff. the furniture, the food, that turkey is, that's a beauty. That deserves a close-up right that, now. That worked out, <laughs> I'm happy, thank you. <laughs> but I do like to use pretty herbs and fruit to, yeah. you know, make the platter pretty. Also when your guests arrive, and even if you don't have guests this year, you can have little nibbles so people right. don't get too hungry. It's the worst when you sit down for Thanksgiving dinner and you're famished. Totally. And then you're full a few bites in. A absolutely. And also sometimes you have too much or too and many hors d'oeuvres and you're yeah. not hungry. Yeah. So I like, you know, just olives, spice nuts, chips. Who doesn't love Who doesn't love I could a eat a potato chip all day. Cooked chip and cocktails. I love a signature drink. Yeah. That's a big part of entertaining for me always. And so this is a cranberry pomegranate margarita. Ooh. And I love a fun ice cube, which is, you know, easy and inexpensive as it gets. It and takes no time. cranberries, that's the thing too, because you always have these extra cranberries lying around or an extra bag. Right. Great to decorate with and yes. great for your ice cube. Cranberries would be great mm -hmm. on the garland also. If anybody watching is saying, you know what? I don't want to cook this year. I'm not feeling it. They can call you. Yes check out the website, can order as much or as little as you need help with. Do you know yet exactly what's gonna be on the Thanksgiving menu? Yes, grandma's stuffing, mashed potatoes, sweet potatoes, pumpkin pie, apple pie. Classics. The classics. I mean, if you have a Thanksgiving table without mashed potatoes, you're gonna hear it from somebody. What you're are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? What's going on in your world? <laughs> and also, as we head into Christmas season, I'm sure a lot of great ideas you've already got lined up. Um, for sure, we're doing individually boxed dinners for people to do socially distanced entertaining, individual cheese. We do uh, deliveries twice a week. So the weekday deliveries are more easy cooking. Sure. You're doing work, you're doing school, pop it in the oven, and then the weekend's a little more fun, festive with your family, taco nights, or also for dressed up adult dinners. Oh, not yeah, a date night or something? Date night, making it like a steakhouse theme. Ooh. Um, with cocktails. I love that. Speaking of which, cheers, Annie. Cheers. Happy holidays to you too. Thank you. Happy holidays. I had so much fun hanging out with Annie in her backyard, and I so appreciate that she makes every holiday feel so special. But if you want to leave the cooking up to someone else this Thanksgiving holiday, Annie is the person to get in touch with. She has complete Thanksgiving Day menus available, so check her out. Coming up, Levi and I are making a super easy pumpkin ice cream pie that is so yummy. But first, I'm cooking up a stuffed butternut squash and ricotta pasta bake. That's coming up next. I love cooking.
cooking with butternut squash this time of year, so this dish, butternut squash, is the star of my stuffed pasta shells. Take a look. I think this recipe, I'm excited about it because I think this would be the perfect fall pasta bake recipe or even, I think on your Thanksgiving table, this would be amazing. The idea for this is, you know, we've had stuffed shells and I haven't had stuffed shells in years. Uh, usually it's with a red sauce. I'm going to do a butternut squash cream sauce and then I'm gonna stuff our shells with ricotta, ham, corn. I think it's gonna be cozy and yummy and have all the flavors of fall that, that I really love this time of year. To make our filling, I've got some ricotta here. Uh, a whole container. To that, I bought just some deli ham, like black forest ham, maybe a half a cup of corn. I think green is always nice in a filling, so I've got some fresh spinach. And you're just gonna do a really fine chop with the spinach. And back here, by the way, in the big pot, I've got our jumbo shells in salted boiling water. In goes our spinach, a clove of garlic, Okay, and the one thing that I do invest in is a good piece of Parmesan cheese. It lasts in the fridge for a long time. It is, there. you can't compare it to the stuff that's in the shaker. As much as you're willing to grate before your arm gets tired is how much I would say. <laughs> and that is our filling. Let's get the shells out. I dumped out most of the water. And I'm just gonna do that and let them drain. You want them to be really dry. I'm gonna put some olive oil so they don't stick. All right, butternut squash is out. I put that in the oven at about 375, 400, about 30 minutes, till it's slightly browned. You don't want it to get too dark and soft. And I'll show you what we're gonna do with the butternut squash. For the sauce, we're gonna blend up the butternut squash in the blender, but before we do that, I'm gonna let it cool for a second. I have a shallot. You could use an onion, but a shallot's a little milder. And I'm gonna cook this up with some garlic as kind of the base of our sauce. And then I'm gonna cook it on the back skillet here, just in a medium heat with some olive oil to soften it, that's it. Squash goes into the blender. It's nice and soft, that's really the only thing. Got a little bit of salt and olive oil on it. I wish I had chicken stock, but I don't. I meant to get it and I forgot. So to get this going, some half and half or milk would do. And here we go. Mmm, oh my gosh, that tastes so good and nothing's happened yet. It's just salt and a little, well, half and half. So I've got my shallot cooking back here. You just want it to get soft, and then when that gets soft, we're gonna pour this in and create our sauce. Okay, I'm gonna add a couple of cloves of garlic, almost at the point where these are onions are soft. In goes our puree. If you have a baby, your baby would love just this. Here's the thing that's gonna make this sauce really good, cream cheese. I have a block of cream cheese. I'm gonna take half of it and melt it in. So as soon as the cream cheese melts, the sauce is done. To that, you could do fresh thyme, but I'm gonna just do some dried thyme. Nutmeg, just a pinch of nutmeg. Sage, I have fresh sage because to me, holidays this time of year, Oh, nothing better than fresh sage. And our sauce is done. Now to fill our shells. Here we have our shells. You wanna get them cool enough where you can handle them and they're not so hot. So we're gonna fill them. And before I add it to my baking dish, I'm gonna, you don't want them to stick. So I'm gonna take some of our, this sauce is so velvety. We're gonna put a yummy layer at the bottom. So use about half of it, because we'll put the other half on top. So you got a bed for your shells, and then you just fill and place them along, and it's like an assembly line. The 
rest of our sauce goes on top. Make sure each one is covered. You don't want them to dry out in the oven. To that, last thing I'm gonna do is some Parmesan cheese on top. I actually think I'm gonna cover it. Now, this is gonna go into an oven for about 25 minutes. I mean, everything's cooked, so just until everything gets warmed through. Oh my gosh, the kitchen smells so good. Our butternut squash, ham, ricotta cheese, and corn stuffed shells. Oh my gosh, that pasta bake is so good. I think it'd be the perfect weeknight meal or even on your Thanksgiving table. For the complete recipe, check us out on Instagram at KTLA California Cooking. Coming up, it's a fun and easy twist on a traditional pumpkin pie. It's my pumpkin ice cream pie, and Levi gets in the kitchen to help. Pumpkin pie is my favorite on Thanksgiving, but I think Levi would enjoy ice cream even more than pumpkin pie, so what if we combined the two and made a pumpkin ice cream pie? Let's see how it turns out. Do you know what we're gonna make today? Pumpkin pie. We're gonna make a pumpkin ice cream pie. So we're combining your favorite thing, which is ice cream, with some pumpkin puree. And before we do it, I need a bite, bite. You've already eaten everything on here. But here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna give these the good old wrestling move there with the graham crackers. So first, yeah. just like you would with a cheesecake, we're gonna do a graham cracker <laughs> crust. So we have graham crackers that are we, Levi are we is. making crust? Yeah, yeah. So let's throw in, I think you've managed to really do a number on those. Oh yeah. Crust. Oh yeah. Oh, it's perfect. All right, it's I'm gonna pour great. them in. Oh yeah, we don't even need a food processor. You're so good. Now, in the bottom, by the way, I forgot to mention, I have about a quarter of a cup of, you could use any nut you want. I'm gonna use a walnut. And I just toasted them on the stove for a couple of minutes just to get them a little brown and toasty because this is a no-bake pie. Butter, melted, about four tablespoons. Pinch of salt, that's it. This is the crust, you ready? Pulse. Pulse, 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 pulse. That's a good crust that I made. That is really good crust. Look. Our graham cracker crumbs sand. are nice and feel it. Look, it's it's like sand. It's like wet sand. So we're gonna pour it in here. Take a little measuring cup. And here's what you wanna do, Levi. So you wanna smooth in it. Smooth it out. And that will help you get an edge. Okay, now I'm gonna take this. And, and make smush down. Yeah, and you want to get a rim going all okay. the way around. Okay, okay, I'll get a rim. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna put this in the fridge. You should probably let this chill at least an hour, maybe overnight if you can, if you have the time. What do you think, Levi? Does it look good? Let's do it overnight. Okay. That means you should go to bed. Now? to break up you and your vanilla ice cream, but we have to make the pie. I know. I love it. When it gets soft, vanilla bean ice cream. Thank you Going for in. ordering two. You're welcome. To that pumpkin puree, I'm gonna try, I, because I've never made this before, I'm gonna try half this can. Pumpkin and see guts. That, uh, pumpkin guts, exactly. Pumpkin pie spice, which pumpkin pie spice is cinnamon, ginger, nutmeg, and cloves. Because it's softened. Maybe I said I'm gonna have a sleepover. What now? I invited I'm gonna have a sleepover. I'm gonna have a sleepover. Who do you want to invite over? For a sleepover. You. Aw. Okay, Levi, here we go. We're whipping our ice cream. Basically what we've done is made pumpkin ice cream. So I'm gonna give you a taste. Let me know what you think. Yum. I like it. Now what we do is our pie crust has been in the fridge. It has hardened up. Here's what we're gonna do. 
Are you ready for this? This is exciting. Look, Levi. <laughs> yum, yum, yum. The flavors of fall. This has to go back into the freezer. Okay, bye bye. I would say an hour. Okay, you get a job. You are my salted caramel sauce drizzler. Okay, but before, I'm gonna go get the pie, our pumpkin ice cream pie out of the freezer. Can you say pie, 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 pie? pie, pie. It hardened up. Oh boy. Now, Levi, look at this trick. Right? Our crust, it worked. I'm always excited and surprised when it works. You wanna drizzle? You ready to drizzle? You gotta do a pretty design, you ready? I don't know how to make designs. Just go back and forth. I'm gonna make squibble scrabble. Yeah, whoa, okay. Ta-da! Ta Should we try it? Try Let's it. take a bite. Good drizzle. What do you think? Love it. I love you, thanks Levi. Mm. That pumpkin ice cream pie was a total hit. You guys should definitely try it this Thanksgiving. Well, that does it for us. We'll see you guys next week. Just Somebody watching the cooking show? Is anybody out there? Okay. Somebody just saw us. Really? That somebody just passed. Look, it's a focus. CD. Let's focus. It's a CD. CD? Yeah. <laughs> How do you know it's a CD? It's a CD. <laughs> it's a CD. Yeah. Wait, do you know what a record player is? Um, yeah. What? They make music. Yes! Very good. Okay. So, Levi, do you know... <laughs>